everybody, hey, welcome to Beyond well, make sure they I cut Do. Out the heavy breathing. <laughs> We're trying to start the podcast right now, actually. If that's all right with you. <laughs> We're trying to get started. <laughs> all right, everybody, welcome to Beyond I Do. And thanks for joining us. Episode seven in the books. Thanks, whoop, everybody, whoop. for all the incredible uh, feedback, connections, uh, people made with the podcast. Funny story, like the couple episodes ago we encouraged someone on the on the day on the dating <laughs> side like hey if the, hey girls if there's a guy that you want to make the move send him this podcast maybe you'll get the hint and some girl dm'd our, our page and said hey i tried it and i didn't hear anything back <laughs> she said she got <laughs> crickets, crickets. <laughs> it's okay a shot's hey, a shot absolutely absolutely Shoot his loss yeah it is his loss yeah absolutely. right and her gain and her gain right confidence yeah, yeah her i think gain that, is, i honestly you know? think that like when you do get turned down, there is a level of, yes, sadness that you got turned down or, or, or upset. But then there's also a level of like, I did it. Is that the worst that can happen is no one responds? Yeah. Hey, all right. Yeah. I mean, exactly. Well, you know, you just you shoot your shot. That's what I always tell guys all the time. Like, you shoot your shot. They say no. 800, 8 billion people in this world, 50% of them are women. Like, yep. got a couple billion more of opportunities <laughs> <laughs> to meet somebody. To meet somebody. So, there, there you go. There you go. Yeah. All right. As always, sometimes we have people on or tackle. Mm -hmm. um, as this moment, has the one with Aaron and Erica gone live yet? That'll be the week before. It comes out tomorrow, tomorrow. for us mm -hmm. as we record this. Yeah. Sweet. I'm excited for that one. Oh, yeah. So, good, hopefully, good everybody, one. you've given us some great additional questions because mm -hmm. we're going to do a part two. To that episode because I had a lot of fun with that one. And then last week we talked about uh, kind of dating and a person's um, uh, not just political beliefs, but beliefs that maybe are opposite to yours. Yep. So that was a great episode as well. And this one, what we thought, which is what if you watch last week's episode, there was an original question you wanted to do. And then mm -hmm. I pivoted to the politics question. Right. So we decided to address that the question today, which was the one that uh, you and I think some of the other others wanted to do originally, which was um, how does life in marriage change after children? Yeah. That's a good question. It's a very good question <laughs> <laughs> because the dynamic completely changes. Oh, yeah. It's a bigger expectation in your unity in marriage, but then also bigger expectations to keeping humans alive yeah. and, <laughs> and keeping uh, order. And that's what we talked about, like having yep. your circus and understanding uh, the roles that are to be played within your m marriage, but also in your, in your family now. And so, yeah, I think ours completely changed. I think we've all, we, we both can agree that um, having kids has completely changed our lives and we can't imagine our lives before the kids. I think I always go back to what were we doing and we still had fun within our marriage, um, but it's even more fun having experience with our kids and seeing it through their eyes and seeing how they view us as not only people, but as their parents, as mommy and daddy. Mm -hmm. um, so when talking about what changed, um, I think the selfness, our selflessness between us had to change. We both had to be selfless in being now a mom and a dad, not just a husband and a wife. Um, because we had someone else in the picture. We have a third party. <laughs> we have a, yes. uh, what do they call it when you uh, go on a double date or you go on a date with your husband and like Heron would come with us. What do we say? He's the third oh, wheel, the third, the third, third wheel. wheel. Yeah. So our kids, we have a third and a fourth wheel now that are broke. And so we yeah, have yeah, to yeah. <laughs> navigate yeah. that life. But I mean. Well, um, ultimately what, what having children does is it, it reveals where your marriage really is at. Mm, that's, yeah. that's what that can ultimately do. And, and then it happens vice versa. Cause what happens is it'll, it'll reveal where your marriage is at. And then, uh, you'll begin to build rhythms where if your marriage is unhealthy, you can immediately make everything about your children. And, and, and what we see a lot of times in counseling is, when couples g reach the phase of empty nesting mm -hmm. and the, all the kids are at the house, uh, there becomes a new wave of uh, potential divorce talk, separation talk, mm -hmm. unha unhappy talk, yep. because you now have to deal with each other and, and, you, and you end up realizing, oh, for the past 
25 years mm-hmm. because oft- you may have two or three children. And so mm-hmm. um, as one turns 18 and goes to college, you go for the next one, next one. And mm-hmm. so that, that stint could probably be about 20, 25 years. And so you realize, oh, for 20, 25 years, we created a new rhythm where our children became a scapegoat to our marriage. And here we are now, we have to deal with each other. Right. And we didn't realize, which I see it all the time, we didn't realize how actually... Um, how, how far apart we are from each right. other in similar and how much we've grown different mm-hmm, from each mm-hmm, other. Like mm-hmm. many marriages don't realize that until the kids uh, leave the house. Right, right. Uh, but if you're talking about young families, which is where that original que- question came from, which was that young married couple that's young and in love and honeymoon phased and, you know, you get a get up and go whenever you want. So if it's a Friday at eight o'clock and you guys want to go out to dinner, you just get up, you can go. go, you want to, go down to the beach on a Saturday and you just put your sandals on and, you know, put a swimsuit on. You guys go to the beach. Come back from bedtime. Then you have children and and you got diaper bags, snacks, Mm -hmm. whining, crying, Mm -hmm. complaining. You get siblings fighting, pushing, sick, punching. Yeah. Sick. You, you, you know, for us, if on a Saturday, we decided we want to go to the beach, <laughs> like impromptu, I mean, take hours. Oh, you did th- there's no chairs impromptu. and shade. Yeah, no. And you know, like there, that, 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 that completely changes, changes, yeah. changes the whole dynamic Absolutely. of the entire uh, relationship, parenting, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff like that. One thing know? I want to ask you though, because you, you, yes, you, yes, you, <laughs> you made a great statement because I think a lot of maybe either women, this could go for uh, stay-at-home moms or even just wives, how you said you can truly find out the balance of your marriage when you have kids. What in me did you see where you said, I can trust my wife knowing that we will have kids and her li- Ashley will not, Ashley's life will not be her kids? How did you know that in me? Was well, that in the dating? Reality was is, that in- no, I didn't know that. Okay. I mean, na- naivety is naivety. Yeah. So this is one of those instances, like in the past, we talked about like dating right and looking right. at, you know, and I think there's some, like, I think on the tail end, I could talk to a couple and I could somewhat see what they're going to be like when they have children, kind of. But, but this is one of those aspects that um, you, you really are playing roulette. Mm. Like, okay, we're like... Is this person going to make our marriage a priority when they when we have children? I I think it's very hard um, to pre counsel through that. Like you could bring it up. That that should be talked about. But but in terms of catching whether this person is going to uh, do well or not in the same way, like for you, it would have been really hard for you to judge. Is Adam going to be an active father in, 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 if we have children, is he going to be an active father or is he going to be like a lot of other Hispanic men mm-hmm. that just choose to provide right. and tell me as long as there's food in the fridge and the bills are paid, I did my job and give me my space. Gotcha. It's a very Latino yeah, thing. Absolutely. You didn't know. Yeah. And for all intents and purposes, my father came from right. that culture. My grandfather came from that culture. You talk to my, you talk to my, my, you talk to my dad, he'll tell you that's how his dad was. And you talk to mm-hmm. my grandpa, my grandpa would say, oh, my relationship was even worse with my father. Yeah. Right. So for all intents and purposes, you could have surveyed that and been like, Adam's going to be that guy right. that when he comes home, he, and my dad did a great job at, cause I think it came in tears where my dad did better than his dad. And then his dad did better Mm -hmm, than his dad. mm -hmm. And I think I'm doing better than what I was even exhibited. So my dad wasn't fully like this, but there was a sense like, okay, dad comes home. He's got his space on his couch, his little seat, you know, his, you know, we, we go to eat where he wants to go to eat. It's not like nowadays you kind of like, Hey kids, it's a family decision. Where do you all want to go to eat? In the past, it was like, dad worked hard wherever he chooses to yeah. eat that's where we're all gonna go yeah. right so for all intents and purposes even on the flip like you didn't know the yeah. type of dad i was gonna be um you didn't know if i was gonna stop dating you when right. we got married right. you didn't know whether i was gonna stop being intentional and so i think it's very hard to say yeah i i i judged it on the front end and i knew ashley yeah. was gonna Ashley not only was going to be a great mom, but a great wife at the same time. Yeah. I had I had no idea yeah. whether that was going to happen or not. And I think one thing that got us through those times, because I think there were times where I could have hid behind Matthias and I could have been selfish and just been like all about him. But I saw 
the work ethic in you and how much you valued our marriage and me. You loved Matthias, but the one thing that you did and you wanted to prove was that you love me, obviously, in my marriage, in our marriage, just yep. as much to make sure that we have that quality time. Um, because I remember we were engaged and we had taken out my brother's kids. Remember when we went to mm -hmm. Disneyland, we took out Noah and Charlie, just two of so them. So we tested it out. Tested it yeah, out. We having took kids. having kids. <laughs> And a little trial run. We you literally know? did. We went to Disneyland. We were having a great time, but our focus was just the kids. And it was making sure that they were fed. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Oh, you have to go potty. Oh, you're hungry. Oh, you needed to get changed. Or, or you want to do something. Or you need a nap. At that one point, I think halfway through the day, I think we were almost done. And I think we both looked at each other and I think we both go, hi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it was so you are so immersed within kids that sometimes you do forget to put that effort in. And that's what I would say is after having kids, it's a bigger effort with your spouse if you want this to work, if you want your marriage to be healthy. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any I don't think there's a such thing as unconsciously having a healthy marriage. Right. I don't I don't think it's an I think you can unconsciously date and have fun. Mm -hmm. I think you can even unconsciously if it's just you two, you could pretty much just go, oh, I don't know. We just uh, we, we have we enjoy each other. and We have a great relationship because we just kind of take everything day by day. Mm -hmm. Like you can almost unconsciously do that before having children. Right. Uh, in the dating phase, you could definitely unconsciously do that. Oh, I text them and I say, hey, what are you up to today? And you want to hang out? Yeah, we hang out. Then we go to the movies and mm -hmm. we blah, 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 blah. But it's like when you start to have children and then you're married, everything you do in terms of uh, approaching a healthy perspective and health, it 100% has to be conscious. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there has yeah. to be an element of not totally systemic, like, right. Cause some right. people may just not be good at planning things, but there has to be um, a, a space in which you acknowledge how do, how does me and my spouse engage our marriage in a healthy way with having our children. Right. And that, and that could look like a lot of things, but for us, it looks like um, there are times where I may have a really busy week and you reach out to my mom or your mom and say, Hey, can I drop the boys off? Um, I really want to spend time with Adam, I blah, blah, blah. And then you'll text me, hey, tomorrow night I have uh, your mom watching the boys from four to eight. And so we could do whatever we want. Right. From there, I can now make a decision as the husband to say, okay, am I going to wine and dine my wife? Are right. we going to stay in? Mm -hmm. Are we going to, I can now start, because what a lot of times a lot of women are looking for is, full engagement that the husband does everything mm -hmm. like I'll set up the sitter and I'll yeah. do this and that could happen, but that's not fully practical. No. So for us, like what works for us is most of the time you engage the, the, the parents yeah. as sitters. Yeah. You tell me, and either you'll tell me, this is what I would like to do. Hey, I got a sitter. I looked at your calendar. It's open. Yeah. Uh, I would like to go see this new movie in the theaters. And right. I go, okay, I'm taking my wife to the movie the theaters, right? right. Cool. Yeah. And then we're going to go, and we're going to have a great time. Yeah. Or you'll say, Hey, I did it from this time, this time. I mean, sometimes I'll ask you, Hey, what, let's do something on Friday or whatever. But a lot of times y you in my busyness, yeah. you're like, Hey, I'm looking at Adam's calendar. I'm seeing when he's free. Yeah. I'm working out the sitters and, yeah. and you're telling me either that's a time where we're going to be I'd love to let's be intimate or <laughs> let's go on a date or yeah. whatever that is. Yeah. And, and, and we're, we're being very conscious that that's kind of a system that works for us. And what we acknowledge is we try to, we try to do it once a week, but if we right. can't, it definitely won't go longer than two weeks without you and right. I spending some type of uh, alone time, right. not in the house, but just in dating uh, each yeah, other. Absolutely. Um, it's very rare that it's once or twice a month. I know some couples yeah. who go on dates once a quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not for us. Eight right. years in with children, two yeah. boys. Um, that's not our system. We would never go mm -hmm. once a quarter without a date or anything yeah. like that. A system that we adopted, which we got from Nathan and Sanaz that we really admired that uh, for the most part, we try to do some type of vacation or getaway every quarter. Yeah. So every 90 days we like to, and 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 we kind of, for the most part, have adopted Nathan and Sanaz's, which is uh, that equals four trip trips a year, and they mm -hmm. can be as small as like going to San Diego San, yeah. or whatever. And then there's other ones like going on a cruise, but once a quarter, 
two are together alone, two are with the boys mm-hmm. as a family. Mm-hmm. So, so because because what my responsibility is as a father is, and a lot of men take a piece of this responsibility serious, mm-hmm. and then they don't take another piece of the responsibility serious. They take the piece of the responsibility of, I need to tell my kids they need to do chores. They're going to take out the trash. They're going to mow the lawn because I'm building discipline. Mm-hmm. They're going to be in a sport because they got to learn how to work with other people mm-hmm. and they got to learn how to be social Coachable. and they got to be, and they're going to do their homework. And then my question would be to that man, okay, how do you, sh- how are you showing your children what a healthy relationship looks like? Yeah. How do you do that? Right. A lot of men would go, oh, I don't know. Right. So for me, going on date nights, going yeah. on trip. Our boys we, are fully aware. Oh, yeah. We just, you and I, we just celebrated eight years of marriage yeah. uh, last week or this week, but we celebrated it last week. Yeah. And uh, we, went, we went to Napa. And I, I remember having a conversation. Very, it was important for me to have this conversation. Math- Matthias uh, is five and a half. And, um, Had it early enough. Yeah. So we said, and we've been doing it since the boys were born, basically, yeah. almost like nine months into them being shown. But we said, hey, Matthias, uh, mommy and daddy are going on a pl- airplane. He's used to daddy going on an airplane. Right. Uh, but it's only a couple times a year that mommy and daddy are either going away or on an airplane. Yeah. So Matthias says, why can't I come with you guys? Mm-hmm. And I said, because, Matthias, mommy and daddy have to spend time together. And he's like, but why can't I spend time with you guys? <laughs> and I said, because, Matthias, mommy and daddy are better mommy and daddy when mommy and daddy get to spend time alone. Yep. The more mommy and daddy love each other, the more tr- the more that you will be happy and the more that you will see how healthy mommy and daddy are. Yeah. Now he's five. He doesn't fully <laughs> understand that conversation. Right. right. But as long as I keep drilling that yeah. into him, yeah. what I'm doing is I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to have him cope that we're going away. Right. I'm trying to get him to realize daddy is teaching you this is important. Right. Daddy spending time with your mom. Mm-hmm. taking pictures and dating and kissing and me loving on her. Like I am set the same way I would when I take you in the backyard to kick a soccer ball right. or me and him, I turn on, turn on the VR and teach him how to do a VR game. Right. I'm instilling in him. This matters. Right. This is important. And the older you get, yeah. the more that you go, man, my mom and dad really worked hard at this thing. Right. Right. Cause that's what it takes. Yeah. The more he yeah. goes, Okay, they set a good example that I think I'll, I'll be able to do this one day yeah. when, when I go into a relationship. Absolutely. And I think it comes down to, because I know we talk to a lot of couples, too, that just have been honest and transparent. And they say, I don't have the, I guess, luxury to be able to get away as much as I would like because either family isn't close or they may not have mm-hmm. sitters. Um, I think, though, that it is still important that you do try to build commu- community that is invested just as much within your marriage to know when you need that time. There have been many of times, too, Jermaine and Jasmine have told us, and we have a great support system, obviously, with your mom and my mom, that we've been able to have time. But it was it's just so unique to see someone in our friendship, sh- friendship like Jasmine and Jermaine, who Jasmine will text me maybe once a month and say, let me know when you need me to watch the boys so you and Adam can get away. Mm-hmm. That's community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She 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 doesn't know the ins and outs of how much we do get our alone time. But she sees two parents that work hard, that love hard, love those around them and and are saying I want them healthy. Yeah. And saying I don't mind taking your kids for an evening because I know it's important for your marriage. And so I think that Sometimes we as couples can give ourselves the excuse, well, I don't have a sitter. You're part of a community in a church that has so many people that are willing to love on you and, and, yeah. and believe in your marriage. And I get it. Like, we live in a very fear-driven world today. Yeah. So people yeah. go like, well, I don't I want, trust anyone yeah. with my Absolutely. kids. And Absolutely. I don't want my kids around the you know, anything, Anybody, particular person right, or whatever. Right. Or, you know, I know people are like, I don't even, you know, trust them with, uh, with my own parents. Right. Like I, I, I know, pe- that. I, yeah. I hear and I, and only because of whatever their trauma is or whatever their fear is yeah. can, can, uh, inform that. I particularly don't walk. I'm, I'm totally aware. I, I'm, we're very strict with who, who's around right, our boys and right, hangs out right. with our boys, but we have conversations with, with our boys. Oh, like, yeah. like, like, 
where's your pee pee? Where's your butt? Yeah. Who can touch it? Who can't? Yeah. Only mommy, only daddy. Blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah. like in terms of healthy, you know, who can you give kisses to? Who can't? And, yeah. we're, and we're teaching them. And you speak up. If, you know, you just did, said there was an instance. Yeah. Matthias just got kissed in class and he went and told. And he, <laughs> he said, my told. mom said, if someone ever kisses me or something yeah. that isn't this person. So he went and, uh, told you them. know, told the teacher, which is great. Right. You're teaching, hey, this is boundaries. This is what not okay with. This right. is. And so I think you build into trust. You and I have made that offer to even to other couples. And yeah. I'm trying to think if anyone ever said yes before or not. But we, couples who have told us, well, we don't really have anyone. And, and they're our friends. We've said, hey, just hit us up. We, right. we can play with our boys. You All know, day. we, you know, um, yeah. I've even told people, like, we have cameras in our house. Right. I'll give you uh, access absolutely. to my cameras. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, like, it, whatever makes you feel trustworthy, yeah. right? I think is appropriate and Absolutely. whatever will, will help you uh, give trust mm -hmm, away mm -hmm. is important. You know, care.com is, is a great place to right. start that yeah. reviews people and stuff like that. But I think that you have to make that investment. You do. And if you have that conviction, then that's okay. I don't want to shame anyone. But as your children get older, I believe at some point you need to start, whether they're 10, 11, yeah. 12, at some point you have to start showing them that your relationship is far more important than who you are as parents. Absolutely. Because I only do that. I only, let, let's just say you meet a couple who's been married 50 years. Only for about maybe half of that were they active parents. Mm -hmm. For the other half, they were together, like yeah. just them yeah. for the most part, right? Yeah. Like once you hit about 50 years old, and let's just say, Lord willing, you live to 80, 90, like, yeah. You live to 50, like you got the next 20 to 30 years that that woman is the person you look at every single day. And there's no more kids <laughs> crying, throwing toys right, or right, anything like right. that. And so during that kid season, season, you cannot get lost in the sauce right. of making everything about the kids. Right. Because at some point that goes. And if you build such a habit of that. It is going to be such a big life change for Absolutely. you that it's going to be hard for you, you and her to, to cope with. Absolutely. And we see it all day. Yeah. You, you know? literally have set now a boundary between you and your husband that you didn't allow your husband into of, of nurturing, raising, uplifting the kids. You made it all about them. Your identity was in them to now where now your kids have families and now you feel lost in the sauce. You yeah. feel lost in your personality, feel lost in your identity, you feel lost in your marriage. And that's where we see a lot of marriages um, kind of fall by the wayside um, because there was no investment during those years, during the growing years. Yeah. So I would say that all to say too, is that even after when you do have kids, you do have to set boundaries, whatever that may be. And your boundaries where we've talked to plenty of couples too, that they say, and they're very strict and I to each his own on how you raise your kids. They're very strict with nap time and bedtime because they have said and they, they decided that right when my kid goes to bed, regardless of seven o'clock, eight o'clock, I have that two hours with my spouse. Mm hmm. Yeah. So make that a habit and set those boundaries like you're set on that boundary of you're going to bed at a specific time so I can have the, at least those two hours with my husband at the end of the day or my wife at the end of the day. And you have to be intentional with that and you have to stick to that because if you're saying, like you said, we uh, I don't really have anybody to support. I don't have anybody that I really want to watch my kids. I'm very guarded. That's absolutely fine to each his own. Uh, no judgment. You raise your kids how you desire to raise your kids. Um, but make sure when you're raising your kids, you're also raising up your marriage. Yeah. And continually growing your marriage, continually um, you investing. You can't put pause on that for no, 18 years. Ever. You, you can't, can't do an 18-year pause no. on, on your marriage. No, because resentment know? will come in. Yeah. And, and for us, we have just made it very clear that we know when we haven't spent time together and we know when we've been lacking in just our investment. We're bickering, we're fighting, we're distant, don't talk to me. Don't. And you even said it on one of the podcasts, you're like, oh, because we haven't hung out. We haven't. Last night, for example, you got home from your men's sprint. You were probably exhausted. I was poop tired. Yep. But I, I knew I hadn't seen you all day. Yeah. And I said, I know the boys are in bed, but I'm going to spend this next hour and I'm going to be attentive. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to listen to my husband, hear about the sprint, but yeah. because I care, because I love you. 
and because I want our marriage to continually grow. Yeah. But those are things that sacrifices that have to be made. So I could have literally made you dinner and went upstairs and said, mm -hmm. was it good? Great. Good, I'm going to bed. YouTube and and you want to watch YouTube you know, and been and on TikTok? <laughs> yeah. But we we had a conversation for an hour. Yeah, yeah. Uh, an exhausting conversation that we probably yeah, both were yeah. tired. But yeah. we enjoyed each other's company. And when I was sitting there, it just made me think like, and I was, was sitting at the table and it sounds super corny me even saying this, but when I was sitting at the table and we were having this conversation and the boys were asleep, I thought in my head, I was like, man, this is my best friend. And it made me remember back to the times when we were dating and hanging out and just the conversations yep. that we would have endless without interruptions, without kids, without chaos. And it just made me smile last night. Cause I was just like, I enjoy just hearing you talk. And I mm -hmm. think that when you do have that alone time with your spouse, you remember why you fell in love with that person. Yeah. You remember the fun times. You you the the memories just exuberate if yeah. you just genuinely want to invest within your spouse. And so that's something where last night I know it sounds crazy because we're even talking about yeah. it, but that was something where I was Or like, you may not remember, but through conversation you re-engage a new fondness. Yeah. Because this is one thing we always talk about this is a huge That's thing good. you and I talk about in premarital, which we tell a person, we tell the couple always now. We didn't always, but mm -hmm. then we through enough back in marital counseling, we we started like, no, we're gonna talk about this in premarital, which is we expressingly tell couples to say, This person you are marrying today will not be the same person in ten years. Yeah. And if you cannot find a way to discover that new person, mm -hmm. it, their their cycle could happen in five years, seven years, 10 years, whatever it is. Right. But we tell them, if you expect that this person that's sitting next to you at 21, 24, 27, whatever age you're going to get married, and you think in 10 years, that person is going to have the same interests, the same passions, same body figure, the same, <laughs> whatever it is, right? Like right. women have children, their body right, changes, right, their, right. everything like that. They're just a whole nine. If, cause you, we'd hear it. We would, we would do marriage counseling and they, and it would come out of someone's mouth and they would say, this is not the person I married. And it's say, thank God they're not the person you married. <laughs> thank, they're, they're, thank God they're not 21 anymore or 25 anymore. Right. right? Uh, they may have, uh, double down on some bad habits right. or some bad trauma or whatever that is, which which that should be addressed. But overall, when you know we will sometimes in a counseling appointment, well, well he goes golfing all day, and, 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 and this is the example we're yeah. using, and this is what we usually address is like, yeah, when I married him, um, he never golfed. Now he golfs, and he's gone on Saturday five six hours. And when, when we first met and got married, he was never into golf. If I would have known that, you know, and and you'll start to say, this you got to choose every day yeah. and every day you got to put the work in like you did when you were dating, right. when you talked all the time right. and you dreamed all the time right. and you connected all the time, like nine years in 20 years in, like you have to, to what you're saying, you have to sit down, go on a date, yeah. go on a walk, a park, whatever, right. hold hands, but you got to talk. Yeah. Cause I know couples that will go, they'll do the date night. Yep. They'll say, pastor Adam, we did the date night. I'll say, what was your conversation yeah. like? Oh, well we talked about the kids. No. No, you're not allowed to talk about the kids. <laughs> no. Can't talk about the kids. Yeah. What else did you guys talk about? Oh, well, that was about it. We talked about the kids and then yeah. and then we um oh, and then we, you know, just made fun of people or whatever. People yeah. watched, right? <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah. No, like when you go on those times, date nights, walks or whatever, you're in a you're in a discovery phase. Yeah. And and what you're what you need to be hearing from your spouse, you know, X amount of time into the relationship with children and all that is saying, where is their heart at? Yeah. What excites them? Yeah. What, what, you know, and for you as a mom, like what could be exciting you at this time is being a mom yeah. and having the boys. Yeah. So as a husband, I'd say like, Hey, how can I uh, continually add value to yeah. my wife? Who's really liking this season? Yeah. Yeah. Or let's just say you didn't like this season yeah. and you're like having kids is a nightmare and it's a pain <laughs> in my butt. Like I just saw a TikTok yesterday of a girl who had a like a newborn baby in in the car and she was crying and she was eating, eating Chick Fil A. Chick -fil -A. Yeah, she's just weeping. Weeping. And she's like, no one told me this was going to be this hard. Ugh. And um, so it's like, if that's my wife, I'm going. Uh, I'm going. If I can't, how can I help, help you? you? Right. Not not well. You know, that's the card you were dealt. You wanted yeah. to have children. Yeah. You want to, you know. Well, um, I mean, even. I don't know. Some people may know the story. Um, I had Matthias in June. By October, something started going on within my health. And I started getting super sick. 
Mm-hmm. My heart rate was through the roof. My resting heart rate was through the roof. Resting heart rate was 128. 128. Yeah. Yeah. And sitting. Sitting Mm -hmm. like this, talking. Um, Remember, October 5th, to be exact, we went into the emergency room because I was like, Adam, I think I'm having a panic attack. I don't don't know what I'm feeling, but my heart is like at 160 and I'm sitting. This feels wild to me. Yeah. We have Matthias. Uh, what is that? Six months? Uh, what? Six months after? Whatever. And don't do my math. Five Andy, five months. If <laughs> Andy yeah. would be in the room. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, I just felt awful. Yeah. Had no idea what was going on. In and out. In and out. Lost of the, thirty pounds lost in thirty, 30 days. days. Thirty pounds in thirty days. Finally, For someone that was already is already pretty skinny. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. And so I lost this drastic amount of weight. And Adam, you're just seeing me go through this process. But through the process, when we found out I had a hyperactive thyroid, um, you knew I couldn't do things. There were things like it, it, we you couldn't lift Matthias. I couldn't lift Matthias. Yeah. It, it was in the middle. And I was still breastfeeding in the middle of the night. Yeah. And couldn't carry him up the stairs. Can, nothing. Couldn't take him out of the car from uh, with the car seat. And you um, were working a full time job and I'm yeah. on maternity leave. Mm-hmm. And so it was something in that moment, obviously seeing your wife, I mean, you could have been like, well, you do still have strength, just stay in bed and don't move and mm-hmm. roll them in and out. And that, that's gonna be easy enough for you. But you in that moment saw the help that I needed, you would wake up at 2am to put him on me and go back mm-hmm. to sleep. And then wake up again at 5am, put him on me, then go back to sleep because there I just couldn't, couldn't pick physically him pick him up. Yeah. And so it's all if you pulled up in the house, I'd run outside, run outside and grab the yep. car seat. Or Everything. It was great, great leaving my parents at the time because yeah. I think they helped sometimes yep. in terms of getting the car seat and yeah. all that stuff like that. Yeah. So, but it goes to say, like after kids, it, it, you should become a stronger team mm-hmm. because there's you, you there's two of you versus one of them when you first have your first. Mm-hmm. Now, if you want to be outnumbered and have as many kids as you want, that's on, that's on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but to say there have been a lot of marriages, and I think that a lot of people should find hope and that there are a lot of healthy marriages that do do it right, that do have kids. Yeah. And, and that even when you do have kids and you're finding yourself in a struggle or strife, it's not too late. Mm -hmm. There still can be a routine that you can add in and boundaries that are set that are for you and your husband, but they happen on those walks. They happen on those talks. They happen on that alone time to say, because we even talk about where we have our conversations, our hard conversations aren't at home. They aren't at the dinner table. They aren't in our house because we find that as our sanctuary. We find that as our peace and calm. Um, So we have them out in public. And that's normally kind of what we say, like, how can I be a better wife? Yeah. And and the honest truth comes out because it has to Mm -hmm. if you want a healthy marriage. And it isn't something to say that the you're being a terrible wife, but it's saying, hey, I notice you're spending a lot of time with the kids. Is there something that I can take off your plate so that now we can have that time that your time's not fully invested in the kids, but that I can come in and help you? Or it's to say, um, just and plain and simple. If you said, no, I like being invested in the kids and I go, well, I feel like I'm not being seen. And you say, well, that's just the season we're in. Then it's selfish. Right. You know, like- very because that can happen too. Very. The person can offer, "Hey, what can I do for us to, right. you know, connect more?" And then right. I'm like, "No, nothing. I'm good." Well, it's like, I would even okay, say too. Well, then you're you're being a selfish person. Absolutely, because you know? you've traveled a lot this year. You've traveled yeah. a lot, and so you've. Be, I've been with the kids majority of the time, and so when we leave together, I have a harder time because the boys have never. It's very not as frequent that I, we're both gone, mm-hmm. so. But for me, I know the importance it is for us to get away. So I have to put that aside and say, my boys are going to be okay. And the example that we're showing is far greater than the two days that we're gone. Because they're still getting loved on. They're still getting cared for. They're still getting poured into by grandmas. Yeah. And so for me, though, you there, there have been times, I even think this year, where you were like, can you go on this trip? And I, and I think I said, no, I'd, I want to be home with the boys. And it yeah. wasn't because I didn't want to be with you. And you could have completely taken it that way. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you know, and 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 different seasons do take different priorities. So, right. so we're in a season where where you know the oldest has started school, and mm-hmm. so he's in kindergarten. So he has a much more stricter 
um, schedule right. than, than in the past where we could pick up you know, and go. Oh, pick up and go, and yeah, we can even bring the kids with yeah. us. Like I've spoken at places, and I've brought you got the right. whole family. Right. Now it's like, oh, if we did that, he's not gonna be in school. He's gonna right. have to take homework away and all that. And so, it's literally like, okay, hey, Adam, this is the season you need to be in. It's important. Right. We we get that. But also, our son's in a season two, right. and so we need to respect that. And then as the mom, I think it's a priority of the family that the boys get the necessary rhythms and routines with school and sports that yeah. may not consist with me traveling you with you like I right. did in the past, right. which is a it's okay. It's great. Right. That That's the understanding we're in. That just means we got to, when I am present, we mm-hmm. got to double down. Yep on communicating, on yep. getting that space. Yep. Uh, there's, you know, there's even times where if I'm gone a lot, I come back and it's literally like, you'll say, Hey, I'm going to take the boys and go to my mom's. And I'll be like, no, no. like I haven't seen my sons in four days. Yep. Like you're, you're not, yeah. you know, like, yeah. or, or go hang a couple hours, but come home. Right. Like, right. I want to hang out with the kids. Yeah. I haven't been around and it's us communicating and you're not like, well, what do you have against my mom? Or right. what do you, you know, it's like, <laughs> right. no, no, like, or there's been a Saturday where you're yeah. like, Hey, Matthias has a game and usually we'll hang out if we're in yeah. the area, we'll yeah. hang out with your whole family. And then there's other times where it's like, no, let's just go home, home. because yep. I want to, I want to spend time with the boys. Yeah. I haven't been around all week, yeah. but that takes, that takes massive amount of communication. That takes mass, massive amount of respect That takes massive amount of honesty because people who are hurt will hurt people. And so if you're hurting as a wife or you're hurting as a husband, then anything that's contrary to the outcome that you want, you're Mm going to see it as an attack. Mm -hmm. You're going to see it as disrespect. You're going to see it as dishonor. And so unless you start getting this communication and honesty thing down, and then also you build in healthy rhythms that force alone time with you guys, whether that's at night when they go to sleep or that's actual going on dates Mm -hmm. or two days away with each other, however you can shake it, you have to have some type of system because whatever isn't done consciously, it will not accidentally happen. Happen. No. Oh my gosh. You know, I was just like right now, I forgot who I was talking to. I was talking to someone and they were just like, um, they almost wanted to see if proof was in the pudding. I forget who I'm talking. I wouldn't even say who they were, but uh, <laughs> if I were, <laughs> but but we were talking, and basically he like he asked. He was like, "Hey, is your like? Can I ask you? Is your marriage as healthy as it seems online? Because we got you know like yeah. we we have yeah. beyond I do, and yeah. we do posts, and and so I on the outside looking in, it looks like we're putting on a show." Right. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah, it does. What it looks like. Yeah. Like, absolutely. And a cynical person, which I don't think he's being cynical. I think I I appreciated the honest question. Absolutely. Because, you know, test me, try me all day. It's it's fine. So, um, um, but, but there are natural cynical people who go, who roll their eyes. And Mm -hmm. I've even, I've even looked up to people who claim they had healthy marriages. And then the closer I got, I mean, that thing was a train wreck (laughs) and I would get mad and be like, man, I can't believe I looked up to that thing. I didn't even know you guys didn't even talk to each other, you know? So I get that. Mm -hmm. So he basically asked, he was like, Hey, hey, is it it really look like you guys are healthy uh, from everything I see online? Like, is it, is it, is it really like that? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, I think over the years it hasn't always been, but where it's at today. Yeah. Yeah. It it is. And he said, well, um, you guys just, uh, you guys probably just really enjoy each other's company. He started, he started to kind of rationalize like, oh, you guys must be a unicorn. You must, you must (laughs) have just won the lottery. You must, uh, you know, you must have just lucked out and and you found your soulmate. And and I told him, (laughs) I told them <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it's I was like a lot of work. I was like, no way. Oh my gosh, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, she gets on my nerves. I get on her Good nerves. Time. We, you know, we, we, yeah. you know, we, 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 we are selfish. We've been selfish. Yeah. We, the whole nine. I'm telling. I go. We just, we just have never. We don't ever. It just hasn't in years like gone to the point of no return. Right. Right. Or 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 we have created healthy systems and rhythms that catch right these emotions and and you know Jimmy Evans like the famous marriage mm-hmm. uh, guy, you know he has a famous quote which is you know a healthy mar the healthiest marriages are two servants who choose to serve each other. Yeah. That's the healthiest That's marriage. Yeah. And so I just told that person like. No, we just, we agree that serving each other is mm-hmm. important. Mm-hmm. And there are times where I need to serve Ashley and there's times she needs to serve me. Yep. And there are times that we have to, 
we ha- we have to choose in that moment, am I going to be selfish? Mm-hmm. And am I going to choose to be right over being unified? Right. Or And so there's conversations, which we just had yesterday, which uh, Jermaine was laughing at when um, you and I were on the phone. And I oh, said, you said, oh, the, I said the, hey, the, I need you to be home, oh, yes, yes, yes. home for, for, <laughs> for a contractor to come to the house. And you're like, no, I'm going to work. If you talk to them, you need to be here. And I was like, I can't. And you're like, well, I'm going to work. So you're just going to have to reschedule them. And I was like, no, <laughs> you're going to stay home and you're going to meet this contractor. And then you were like, fine, okay, fine. Whatever. Fine. Okay. You know. And then literally four minutes later, you called me about one of our friends. Yeah. You're like, oh, my gosh, I just saw on Instagram, <laughs> da, 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 right? That took a choice. Yeah. Because there yeah. are other marriages yeah. where, number one, that little dispute would have ruined the, their whole, whole day. day, if not week. Was he like, what in the bipolar? Who? <laughs> Jermaine. <laughs> no, they just laughed because they're like, that's you guys. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like, you guys communicate. You talk very black and white to each yeah. other. And then you, and then even if you are annoyed with each other, yeah. it's water under the bridge yeah. within, within 10 minutes, yeah. you know? Yeah. Cause it and, wasn't big enough to fight over. But to other people it would be, yeah, that's the thing. True. That's the point yeah. is to many other people, mm-hmm. me not forgetting to be home when a contractor was supposed to be there, which I agreed to. Yeah. And then me now not being home. Yeah. Me knowing you were home yep. and you could do it, but you were getting ready for work and mm-hmm. it wasn't your problem per se. Yeah. Right. It's a family problem, but wasn't your problem in the moment. Something I set up. And then I asked you to do something and you're like, no, I want I need to go to work. I want to go to work. And then I'm going to say, I need you to give me 30 minutes and do this. For many couples, that is World War Three level dispute yeah. that would not only ruin the whole day, it would bleed into the kids by the time the kids got home from school oh, yeah. or if the kids were around. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So within four minutes, though, you're calling me and we're laughing about something about our friend on Instagram mm-hmm. and um, not laughing at them, but about something yeah. uh, that 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 would be funny. And so that immediately was like you know Jermaine's laughing going that that's you guys yeah like yeah. you're gonna keep it 100 in the moment yeah but then you're gonna move you're gonna move past it yeah. and you just hey let's move on yeah. but the only reason why we could do that is because we're also having moments like we had last night yeah which I'm like man I know my wife look I know she cares about me I know she's yeah. not trying to get on my nerves and you know that about me absolutely I know he's not trying to get on my nerves uh he genuinely and even sometimes if something like that happens and it will start landing the ship something like that happens if I feel like you're upset, I will follow up with a text and say, I'm really sorry. Yeah. It really is my bad. I really forgot. You did that yesterday. Could you? Oh, did I? Yeah, you I did know. send a text. Oh, okay. So I do that most of the time. Yeah, you did. I got one. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yesterday was a long day. <laughs> yeah. But I could have easily been like, it's both of our problem. This is, yeah, our this is our house. We're both dealing with this issue. Take ownership. Yeah. yeah. Why, why are you passing the buck, Ashley? Right, right. I made a mistake, but the least you could do, if we're one, the least you could do is fit. No, I was like, This is why hey. you don't do this. You don't do that. Now dragging other things that had nothing to do with that. Now yeah. dragging it in, dragging it out. Now tick for tack. Now now we're talking about your mama and her family. Like, <laughs> how did we get here off of yeah. you not staying home for 30 yeah. minutes? And then I followed up. I'm just like, hey, I'm really sorry. I... I honestly forgot to put it in the calendar yeah, and you, you know, yeah, I, I really made a mistake. I apologize. And you're like, it's fine. It's, it's cool. Fine. You were like, it's cool. Yeah. And then we laughed about the other thing. Right. But, uh, but a lot of couples will then be like, you know, they just doubled it. Now you pick up the kids because I don't even want to deal with you and da, 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 da. Yeah. And so, you know, it goes down to one of the things too, that I think is super, uh, a lot of wives I've seen on TikTok that have done this and, and obviously can have healthy marriages, but they view their spouse obviously as how I view you as my best friend. So something as that being upset in that moment of the 30 minutes, when I found this other thing out, I was like, who else do I want to tell? I want to tell my husband and like, yeah. cause he's my best friend and I know you would laugh about it. And I know you'd find a kick out of it. And so there's certain things like that as well, where I'm like, am I really going to allow myself to live in this moment, be mad the rest of the day, ruin his day, knowing you had a phenomenal men's sprint that was coming up that night to where I could alter your whole mood and how, how selfish of me to take something yeah. an opportunity away from you When if we're in this together and we're in this unity together and we're in a family and we want our circus in unity, 
why am I going to cause chaos within the circus? And especially with the husband as the ringleader. I'm not, uh, why? because yeah. then that's going to just trickle down. Now you're going to be mad at me. Now you're going to get cold pasta when you get home. Now are we going to mm-hmm. even talk to each other in the morning? As, how's the routine with the kids? Don't talk to them. Don't talk to me. Now you're not helping me in the morning. There's yeah. bigger, it's a bigger picture as a wife that I want to look at instead of that moment. Yeah. I don't want yeah. to. I don't, I, and, and how does that deal with uh, with the impact of having children? It has to do with everything we just said. It takes a lot of work in yeah, communication. It does. Like it, t- <laughs> like it really does. We didn't. We, you don't accidentally fall into that. No. We, there is enough instances throughout a day that we could say uh, where we choose selfishness, mm-hmm. and then and and really, what children are doing is they're adding a new level of stress. Mm-hmm. And and when you're in stress. You, you you tend to act in emotion Absolutely. and children are very stressful right. i mean there 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 are days that i i'm extremely overwhelmed with right. being a father and being active and trying to get work done and trying to establish and so what can easily happen is that that what seems to be a little little added element of stress and then now it now add in your your kids are che- teenagers and mm-hmm, then now that mm-hmm. they're talking back they're giving <laughs> attitude they're living life however they want to right, live to right. i mean that, now, now one up that stress right, level, right? right? right. It, it's extremely, extremely stressful and it will 100% impact your marriage. It's right. gonna like, right. th- there's no way you just, right. it just kids made anything easier. Right. It doesn't happen, but it's right. a blessing. Right. It's a, it's a blessing to have children. It's a blessing to be unified mm-hmm. with your spouse, but it doesn't happen on accident. No, My son's being healthy one day and having healthy relationships and having purpose in their life does not happen on accident. No. And so, uh, either I can, I, either I could teach them and train them to their success, or I can give them a, enough a trauma that will push them into success. <laughs> right. There's only one or the right. one or the other. You either right. train it and teach it, or you either or you show them how not to do it, mm-hmm. and either it impels them, or they go, oh, that's why, that's yeah. why I'm going to be healthy because they weren't, mom and dad yeah. weren't. Like so, either you yeah. can train it and teach it, or yeah. you can trauma it. Yeah. Is one or the other. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to choose to teach and train Absolutely. intentional relationship, not yeah. show our boys what not to do. Right, right. Absolutely. Just being <laughs> proactive. And I think that you made a good point, obviously, as we end this, is when we were talking about what you found um, important for you was hanging out with your family. Yeah. And I think that's where um, a lot of men can take leadership in, in building that family and, and, and setting those foundations and setting those boundaries as a husband and as a father to say that this is what is important because I think we've talked about it many of times that we've even done funerals and people have lost loved ones of fathers, father figures or grandpas and it's like what did they leave behind? What legacy did they yeah. leave behind within their family and their kids? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's mainly like what did like when my dad passed, it was one of those things like I see your dad in you guys. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I, I'm sure when our time comes to be with the Lord, that's exactly what they're going to say is the same with Matthias and Thomas. Like we see what your dad instilled in you and mm-hmm. the foundation and the importance and the love and the sacrifice and the leadership that he poured into you because yeah. he was proactive when you guys were first young, yeah. when you guys were first growing up because he found that that's what was important for him. Yeah. So I think that's what well, I close with this. It's a warning to all, but uh, I recently, I recently did a wedding and my nationally jaws dropped because it came to the speech time of the ceremony and, and, and the father of the groom in his speech was mm-hmm. son, uh, I'm, I'm, he said, he said, son, uh, <laughs> he said, no, I'm just, I'm trying to think of the words, right? I want to word it right. He said, son, I believe you're going to have a healthy marriage because I showed you everything not to do. I showed you how to not be faithful to one woman. I showed you how not to lead the family. I mean, he just lists all this Listed stuff. All of and then he things. says, so I'm confident uh, as long as you do, don't do whatever I did, mm-hmm. then you're going to be good. Yeah. And I'm confident you're going to have a healthy marriage. And I thought to myself, Wild. I respect him. He's keeping it real. But at the same time, let's not be that. <laughs> right, like, let's right, not be like, right, oh, I know right. my kids are going to do well because I've showed them everything not, not to, to do. do. Uh, like, don't trauma them to it. Mm-hmm. Teach them and train them yep. uh, for it. And, uh, and, and then you can actually take credit. And say, yeah, I did that. You know, yeah. it's, it's the famous, it's the famous uh, football athlete 
the father's been absent his whole life. <laughs> Then the son with the single mother, mother, mm, yep. he he makes it pro. He becomes rich, and then the dad shows up and he says, "Yeah, I I I, I got my son. I I'm, I had a part to play, play in my son going yep. pro." And the son kind of says, "No, yeah, you did. You weren't you weren't there. there. So it cost <laughs> me to I grinded yep. in a new type of way, yep. and I took on new father figures. But you don't get the credit for no, that. Absolutely the fact not. you trauma it it to me doesn't mean right. that you get you get the credit. That's good. You didn't teach it to right. me. You didn't train me. You weren't around. Yeah. It's just by." Uh, absolute default by you not be around <laughs> yeah. it caught i i was one of the few that chose to hunker down and grind through it right where there's a lot of other people who don't choose and mm-hmm. it and and that trauma just completely uh uh you know uh, de- uh debilitates yeah them, you know so all right everybody That's thanks good. for joining us beyond i do Share this with someone if you believe yep. it would be a benefit. Don't forget, leave us a five star review or ten star five review, star. or you know, go out there and right. yeah, and and you oh, can yeah. submit on our Beyond I Do pages, right? Instagram and and the YouTube, and the YouTube, YouTube link. You can if you have uh, more questions, questions you want to submit. Yeah, you can always do in the comments too. We read them as well. Yep. You could DM our channel, but more than anything, there's a link that you can submit questions to as well. Have a great day, guys. All right, bye. bye.